Hi there. Welcome to Creation Station Monthly. This is our monthly show where we bring two strangers together to talk about a topic that they're both creative and passionate about. We're going to go about an hour today, so stay tuned. We're going to have some really fun, interesting conversations about weather. And I know you may be thinking, Bob, everybody talks about weather. How can this be any special? Trust me, these two know what they're doing. Henry, kick us off first. Tell us who you are and what you do. Uh, so I'm uh, 21 years old, and I have a, uh, obviously I have a lot of interest in weather. Um, I, I've been interested in weather since I was about maybe like 8, 9, 10 years old. Um, snowstorms is, is what really got me into it, that first big snowstorm. Uh, Nemo especially, I, that really um, drew me into it. Uh, We're coming so, back to that idea in a minute here. Yeah, yeah. So um, I was in uh, high school and, and my friends were telling me that I should make a weather account because they want to know if we're going to have a snow day. And so I was like, OK, like I'll, I'll make one. Um, and they, they knew I was in a weather. So I, I made account, an account. And uh, ever since then, I've 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 been growing it throughout the years. Uh, it's been like seven, eight years now. I've been growing it and I make my own forecasts. Um, I storm chase. Uh, so I, I do all that. Um, that is pretty I'm, awesome. I'm trying to I'm trying to grow it. I'm, I'm working on getting sponsors. So it, it's it's coming along. It's coming That's along. a good thing. Absolutely. And Mike, tell us all about you because you've got a, an immense page here. <laughs> tell us about your page, Mike. Yeah, I, I live down here in Florida and um, <clears throat> started a website uh, for tracking hurricanes and uh, started that in 2004. It was uh, just more of a hobby, kind of still is today, but uh, it, I was going to school at USF and uh, took a HTML class. And at the time, we were having four hurricanes that year in Florida. And uh, there was nowhere to find good information. Uh, it was impossible to like see spaghetti models. And uh, so I was like, I'll throw them all together on a page and called it Mike's weather page. And then, you know, uh, <laughs> that was it. I shared it with friends and family. And then social media came around in like 09 and uh, got Facebook going. And then uh, last few years just went everywhere, you know, YouTube, uh, X, TikTok, Instagram. So I uh, do a show, um, I storm chase and uh, provide information daily with um, weather. So it's kind of a. And he's, and, he's and Mike, just in case you didn't notice that on his page as I threw it up there and the links are in the show notes for everybody. So please go follow them and go see what's going on. Mike just casually skips by the fact he has 1.5 million people following him <laughs> for his spaghetti models. Yeah. This is how I know Mike, because I go to his page to get, hurricane update stuff because i live in south florida i need to know what's about to come mm. smash into us yeah i know so yeah that's uh it's been it's been fun i mean i'm 50 and uh <laughs> i found my my destiny i guess i, I enjoy it I, I get to go travel now and meet meet up with uh fans and friends and state agencies and nascar it's been yeah you know my family's involved I mean, with it, it. noah been, links to your page so, yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. So, that's, uh, so I want to start you guys off, and and Mike, I'll I'll have you go first, and then Henry just ask follow up with this. So I want to know what do you think society thinks about you guys? Because we've got movies, we got the cool hurricane <laughs> movies and the tornado movies and chasing and this at the other, and everybody sees the weather person online or on the TV show talking. Here's our five minutes of weather stuff. Mm. Tell me what do you think? society really thinks about weather and the old how accurate are you people <laughs> well I, I get it you uh i get it from both sides uh you got the haters uh mm. there's a lot of people that want to forecast weather and they love it when you're wrong and uh they want to be vocal about it when when you're wrong and uh you know majority on my end though believe it or not i, I have uh a lot of positive feedback I found. So, uh, you know, I, I'm careful. I think it's a little different. What I do is I kind of just put all the information out there. So it's kind of, it's not so much making a forecast for what I do. It's more showing all the different scenarios. Um, and people love that. So I try to stay away from hype. I know, uh, one thing people really jump up on is the hype and overdoing forecasts and anxiety mm -hmm. so th those are things i get called out on a lot um and then for me i share my personal life a lot so i think i take more grief from that sometimes mm -hmm. 
you know, sharing the funner side of Mike that some people don't like so much of. So it's a balance. I try to do 80%. I don't do it on purpose, but it seems like I do about 80% weather, 20% non-weather. And, mm. you know, there's you know, having that many people, I, th I think I'm really fortunate. I don't really see a lot of negativity, at least on my end. Mm. Henry, how that, I mean, that, that seems to flow yeah. right with what you've been doing. At, yeah. uh, of course, now we've got Henry growing up with social media doing mm. instead of Mike and I, who. Yeah. Yeah. What, what Mike said, I, I agree with, um, like, you know, people on social media, they, they, there can be definitely some people out there that like just want to attack you, especially if you get a forecast wrong. Um, especially like up here in New England, there was a snowstorm a few weeks ago and, and, uh, it completely just trended South like 24 hours before the event. Uh, luckily, like a lot of people on my platform are, are, are um, pretty nice uh, about it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely changing now with like, you know, the technology, like we're able to pinpoint a little more like uh, where exactly the impact is going to be as, as we cl get closer to an event. Um, and I, I, I share some of my uh, like personal life too. I, I grow uh, giant pumpkins and I do a big Christmas display every year. Um, so I, I there's a lot of that too. And I people like that. Like It's not. It's, it's a lot of it is weather, but it's like what I do, like what my what my other um, like hobbies are as well. Like this this year with my Christmas lights, uh, there's a hundred thousand lights, and and uh, it was actually on a uh, reality TV show, a great Christmas light fight. Oh, that was pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. Well, let me let me follow up on that, uh, Henry. So I I ventured into forecasting, um, not or, or just doing weather for the Northeast this year, and we had a storm. Um, lee last year mm, yeah. that ended up kind of kind of flopping it was that one that massively blew up in the uh yeah um, that one. yeah and, and there was a lot of hype going towards you all and one <laughs> and, and i've done different weather uh events and one thing i learned about the northeast crowd they don't like to be told about weather and yeah, uh sure. it's a different market i've i've it's seen different. it i felt it like be very for me. I'm like I gotta be very careful because man, they they do not like it when you're wrong and no, uh, not at all. they hated not at the all. hype leading up to that storm. Yeah. So I, you're saying I, they don't, uh, Henry? Fill fill me in on this one too. I mean, Mike is saying you you don't like weather forecasters up there. Hype. I think the hype. Oh, the hype the of hype. it. Okay. Yeah, okay. the hype. Yeah, like like um, yeah. People people will attack, especially like the news outlets. Like when a snowstorm missed like a few weeks ago, all of the comments were just pe people yep. are just nasty. They'll be like, "We knew it was gonna miss," you know. It's just <laughs> they do. Yeah, it's impossible. And I will say, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I feel for y'all up there because uh, the rain snow line, which is all around ninety five, right? Yeah. Uh, it's a it's a one or two or five mile swing, and those emotions go with that swing. And man, people get completely pissed you know Absolutely. like i blew the forecast you know and it was only a five mile swing right. on the freeze line you know okay yeah, no. fill us in on that chart okay this is where i interrupt you guys and say okay tell us these terms you're using here so freeze well that henry yeah, henry's the master up there because i'm learning <laughs> yeah so with, with every like you know new england snowstorm there's always going to be that rain and snow line especially if it's a coastal storm if you live right in the coast so I mean, it's it's always like such a sharp cutoff between a few inches and several inches. So if you're off on that, and, and it's very difficult to pinpoint exactly where, like, it, you know, it, it could be up until the event. So, if so is that off, the line where it changes from snow right, to rain? Right. Okay. Yeah. So it'll, it'll be like rain a few miles, and then a few miles, you know, inland could be all snow. Um, so and that's you, based on temperature profile. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. So if yeah, if it's like above thirty-two, then you know mostly rain. And that, that's well, too. It's um, you know, one inch of rain is what uh, eight, nine, ten, twelve inches of snow. snow. Yeah. So you okay. might a little bit of rain is not much, but if it turns to snow, it's could be several inches. You know. That's and, the thing. Uh, yeah. And you, so it's 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 tough to nail it, and that's where people can get angry. But they have to understand, like like Mike, you know, like it's it's difficult. It's very difficult to pinpoint yeah. what exactly that would be. Well, and I, uh, you know, uh, one thing I learned in like Maine, uh, we had a storm, I think it was Lee or one of those w uh, winter storms came in at a different angle and uh, they got it hit hard, like a hundred thousand plus power without a week. And a lot of locals up there told me it was because the trees were all trained to blow with nor'easters 
a different mm. direction. And this storm came in at a different angle and the trees were blown, you know, where they're not used to. And uh, right. then everybody says, oh, y'all missed a forecast. <laughs> yeah. People are crazy. <laughs> and so they don't say what they say. I mean, it's social media. They don't say what they want. I've, when I, when I was doing videos uh, of the flooding, of really bad flooding, like Hampton beach had some bad flooding, uh, like uh, in uh, early, early January, people are just, They'll be like, oh, it's not that bad. It's like, well, why don't you be here for yourself and see it for yourself? Yeah. Well, so tell me about that part of it there, Mike, because um, yeah. you do. You started with hurricanes, really. And like you said earlier, the hype and we've seen the videos of the people go clean to the pole and being blown away, <laughs> etc. Where does that hype come from and how good is it actually? Well, I heard about it again this weekend, so it's definitely a hot topic for people. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think people, at least my crowd, likes to make their own decisions, and they don't like to be made a fool. Um, mm -hmm. So if they feel like the news is hyping, st standing in a puddle, you know, uh, a kayak's going by, but there's an, also a guy walking behind it in six inches of water, they get mad because mm -hmm. uh, whether, you know, I, I think it's a hot topic, no pun intended. Uh, but, yeah. uh, you know, I noticed bringing up temperatures, uh, man, it turns into a debate with climate change because mm -hmm. I, I point out it's a hundred and some degrees out instantly. It turns into that or, or another big topic on the internet is chemtrails and weather manipulation yeah. and people going nuts on yeah. that. Yeah. It's... Uh, I, I just stay away. Like, yeah. uh, you know, um, I present the facts, you know, and um, go from there. But I do know people don't like the anxiety. I, the number one thing I've learned, I think, with hurricanes is uh, they need a calming voice. I somehow have that monotone feel about things. And even when I storm chase, I don't get too hyper. That's one thing I need to pick up my pace a little bit because I might be in the middle of a cat four or five hurricane and I'm not really like, you know, Reed Timmer goes all in. Oh, uh, yeah. He goes crazy. <laughs> But people like that. And at least that's one thing they like uh, is that calmness to get you through a storm. So, And how does that work? So, and Henry, you started rattling off storm names for snowstorms and other things. And I'm used to, I grew up with the idea that we name hurricanes. And this is a new thing for weather, isn't it? That we start naming the bigger type of events like that other than hurricanes? I think Mike might notice, but it's it's been it's been quite a while. I think that we've been naming naming winter storms. Um, but yeah, pe people people like don't like how they're named. Uh, it, it's just it, it helps keep track of them. Yeah. Okay. That, that's that's why they name them. Um, but so yeah, it's yeah. the weather. Um, so really, it's a Weather Channel thing. It, uh, yeah. And uh, some people think that's hype too. They hate it, or at least the feeling yeah. I get down here is everybody hates it. Um, yeah. But ironically, I had a little meeting last night with a gentleman from from texas um we're doing some stuff for hurricanes and he he we were talking about the snowstorm that dallas had a few years back in 21 or with the ice storm that you know yeah. cr crushed everybody in, in texas and oklahoma mm -hmm. and he named it off as that winter storm so it is it, in the industry i think it helps them identify mm -hmm. moments in time okay. that we've had these events. It definitely does yeah i, I agree i agree but i see i see the point of them i do too. yeah so here's my next question for you two is who inspired you to get involved with this, with doing weather? As I was teasing earlier, everybody talks about weather, but you two have made a profession about this. Of how, You've got full careers. Who inspired you to get into weather and, and or supported your idea of, yeah, go try this out? Henry? Um, I mean, yeah, so I, I've, I've always been like into weather. Uh, I guess uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I can like pinpoint a specific person because uh, I guess it's, it's always been my my own interest uh, in it, like with the snowstorms that really got me into it. Uh, but growing up with like, you know, some crazier storms throughout the years, it, it's really like driven my interest more. Um, and I, I, I realized like I, I want to make it a career. So, yeah, I've um, kind of the same boat. I think living in Florida it's a culture like i've done news articles and uh there's something weird about hurricane season everybody's uh, adrenaline gets a little higher and there's a weird excitement you can't explain to people like nobody wants a storm but yet everybody gets a little excited about 
hurricane season. It's not like excited to get one. It's just that, oh my God, the season's here. So I used to right. feel that growing up and I watched Jim Cantori and for some reason I was addicted to the cone and I remember going to bed at night and, and I could not wait to see the, the 10, you know, 10 and 50 tropical update to see where the new cone was. You yeah, know, I, yeah. I, I was excited about that. And then um, I think just getting older and realizing that everybody loves weather made me love weather more. And then, then social media came around and, 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 you know, you feed off comments and I, I, mm-hmm. everybody feeds off of the social interaction. So that fueled me, I think, a little bit more and, and realized, you know, a niche that I had. And it, it just kind of accelerated my love for what I do and, and you know, cool. realized how it affects different people and impacts people. And that it's kind of been a fuel for me. Um, it's like a hobby. You know, it's an addiction. It's weird. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and the thing, too, like it weather's always going to be there, like it impacts everybody. There's always something to talk about. So, especially, you know, especially hurricanes and it's. It keeps you busy, you know. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, nobody would expect that I would have been on, you know, CNN. Erin Burnett, mm. she had me talking about Lee, about the New England storm, <laughs> and I'm like, why me? You know, but yeah. <laughs> that's where I was very careful about my forecast. You know, talking about what was coming because uh, yeah. I was like, oh god, they're watching up there. You know, <laughs> um, I don't think I did too bad, mm. but you know, uh, being in the eye of a hurricane and. You know, I've had News Nation now call and uh, Fox now, and it's like, mm. wow, like little old me. You know, I mean, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. Don't, I don't feel like I rank up there with some of these <laughs> bigger superstars. I just I just have my little niche and, and yeah, yeah. people are riding along and enjoying it with me. You know, that's, that's weird. Cool. That's cool. Tell me about the equipment you guys use that you've both kind of like offhandedly referred to storm chasing. And we've all seen the movies where they have these super tricked out vans and they have all this stuff. And I'm kind of guessing that's not where pe- most people start. One, be careful out there. Anybody who chooses to go do this kind of stuff, please be careful and listen to the experts here. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Hurricanes, by the way, I stay in the EOC, the Emergency Operations <laughs> Center. That's one of my jobs is to go answer phones there during hurricanes. So, yeah, I'm going to stay safe. Um, but tell us, what is that storm chasing equipment like for you guys? Um, I'll go first on this yeah, one, I guess. Yeah. But I... Uh, you know, as far as my little studio setup, it's weird. I really haven't evolved much. Like, like I've, I have had people come do new stuff and they're like, this is it. Like you're broadcasting with <laughs> your audience and you have this little setup. It's kind of my little hall. It's like a little man cave. You know, I got, uh, you know, TikTok light that shines. And uh, so I really haven't expanded much on that. Now the truck is, mm-hmm. is, is like my baby. Um, I, I was out there today packing, you know, get things organized for the, the, if case there's a storm mm-hmm. coming and uh, I got, it's a, it's been an evolution for me with lights and, and radios and, and police scanners and uh, just, you know, generator in the back with fuel supplies. So it's every, every trip I learned something new, like, you know, I need a cooler. I need a 12 volt cooler. I need an extra battery. I need a blanket. I need a pillow. I need, uh, you know, extra water for my contact. So the truck's been kind of a fun you know, I've been in like nine hurricanes now, which wow. it's wow. hard to imagine for me because I, I, you know, I started this on a whim in 2020. But mm-hmm. every storm, I say, oh, you know what, I need this, and uh, yeah, it's been, it's been, uh, that's been my, you know, fun. It's just, it's an 18 Silverado. I, I think now, technology wise, I have gotten pretty good. I got Starlink as a backup. Oh, okay, um, nice. I love, and um, I got a couple of MiFi routers, a four, a four G, five G that uh, are universal with uh, connecting to any network I've, I've learned to master those so i've i've been fortunate in, in these hurricane eyes to never lose signal in and others have mm-hmm. so I, i've kind of perfected the streaming process i guess per se with the cameras i have a camera on me uh, i have an outside microphone uh, so that that's something i think i've worked really hard on is is the, the overall look in the end product you know and guaranteeing them I'm, I'm still streaming <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, definitely. It, it, it's you know, uh, the knock on wood, that's been a good. Uh, do you highlight. have to do any extra weight on the truck for you for it to keep it steady? Or is it just the extra equipment and there is enough weight to keep it down? Yeah, it's a it's a large lifted Silverado. Okay. Um, so I, I tell you what, my, my riding partner, my good friend, Phil, that's kind of my business advisor on the side. He was with me during Ian and uh, he did not like what what I was liking. Like, I was like, this is so cool. I mean, the truck felt like a lowrider one time. I'm like, dude, it's like a lowrider. And he's like, 
can we go? Like he, oh, he didn't like the fact that truck was like almost bouncing, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but I do have a helmet. My daughter plays softball and that was something I added. Um, I have a softball helmet in the back. If I have to throw it on <laughs> for my dad. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it's been. What kind of equipment are you using Henry? <laughs> uh, so like for my, when I make my weather maps, I have a, uh, like a big monitor uh, to display the maps on it. So I can zoom in and, and uh, get a clear image of like what I'm drawing. Um, but I have, I have a storm chase vehicle as well. Uh, I used to have a van, uh, 2006 uh, Toyota um, yeah, a van, a uh, Sienna. And that broke down, uh, not this summer, but uh, last summer. And so I got another car. Uh, so it has my de- decals on it, uh, like a lightning on the windows. And I, I added lights on top of it, like uh, uh, strobe lights too. And if, you know, if I pull over on the side of the road, it has an anemometer on it to measure the wind speed. Um, and so like what Mike was saying, you got to be prepared when you go into these storms. I will say I, I learned my lesson over the summer because uh, when I when I went to Vermont, uh, it was really bad flooding. I believe it was mid-July in Vermont. I woke up that morning and I was looking at Twitter and I saw how bad the flood it was. And I just got in my car and I drove right up. And this this was the first big chase that I, I uh, did. So I, I wasn't prepared. I went up there, wasn't prepared. Uh, I didn't bring any extra clothes, and I got stuck there overnight. Uh, mm-hmm. I couldn't get out of town, so I thankfully somebody, um, actually, an older couple, they were like eighty years old, let me stay in their uh, cabin for the night. But I definitely learned my lesson. I'm more prepared now, and that that event definitely prepared me uh, to be more prepared, like with future storms I go out and chase. I'm getting. I'm definitely. Uh, more prepared for that. I, I have my drone too, so I, I take drone footage all, of all the flooding. Uh, that was that was that drone. The drone helps significantly. Like it, it brings a whole different perspective that people really like because you know just it's a whole different ball game. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've got one too. Um, which, yes, I mean, and, and obviously, you, you, like you mentioned at the start of the show, you know, you want to grow and. One right. thing that I've learned in these storm chases is if you're the first, like, yeah, get that content on there, 10, 15 second clips, man, and they eat that up. Like, absolutely. Tomorrow, they don't want it. Like, absolutely. Uh, so that were the drone. Like, I did some seawall video from uh, your neck of the woods, Bob, um, with uh, Broward County. Mm-hmm. And uh, when we lost the seawalls for Ian and Nicole. Oh yeah, man! I was like the first one that had that footage, and uh, whole man, the whole internet went nuts. Yeah, a couple hours later, everybody had it, and it was old news, you know. So that drone does help. Um, That's a good point. Yeah, like you want to be the first one to to get it out. Like it, it will, it will go, it, it will go pretty pretty big on it on the internet if if you want the first people to get it out. Um, so like like the in in uh, New Hampshire, the Hampton Beach flooding in mid January. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was cool because like I was the first one on the scene, and so I tagged all the news stations. Yes. And then ten minutes later, like all of a sudden, there's helicopters flying over. So I, <laughs> I may have seen my footage, and that's why they came out. Maybe, maybe. But, yeah, I, I'm on your Twitter page, your X page now, and uh, I see. Yeah, I just followed you. So appreciate that. Um, yeah, and I, you know, I guess uh, the reputation follows along with you. You know, once you get in that circle, um, they start to notice you more and they kind of look for your right. content. And, uh, you know, for me, like, I, you know, there's a lot of people making money doing this and I haven't ventured into that, you know, selling clips yet because they always tag my page. And for me, it's just a way of advertising Mike's weather page. And, uh, I think my fans get a biggest kick out of it. They'll, they'll be on the weather channel or Fox or whatever. And they'll see Mike's weather page, you know, and they're, oh, they're Mike. So yeah, kind of, uh, it, it justifies for me to not charge, but I know a lot of people charge and I don't know that whole route yet and uh, I'm not getting into it. That's yeah. a, yeah, that's, I, I completely agree with you uh, on that. Cause I've, I've had stations like wanting to uh, buy my footage and I don't have my little drone license yet. I'm actually working on getting it within the next month. You have to have your license to sell footage. Mm-hmm. So I just said, as long as you tag Henry's by the channel, you can use it. And it's, it's helped, you know, it, like, like you said, Mike, it, it helps get your name out there and, uh, yep. you know, it grows it. So, so what is, tell us about the one thing what's, that you think you got right 
what's that one moment that you were there first? At, like Mike, you started to say about the seawalls there. What's the thing that you got right to get you started that, that triggered, okay, wait, I can really do this? <laughs> well, top of my head, uh, for me, it's been a, a weird growth. Um, you know, for the wrong reasons, hurricanes have put me on the map because we have a lot of people, you know, obviously tur turning in during hurricane, but uh, I think er uh, Michael was the first storm that I really made aware the folks in the panhandle, what was going on. And a lot of people felt, felt like I did it way ahead of everybody else. Um, that kind of put me on the map as far as, wow, you know, some good information there and word of mouth spread in. And uh, then Irma, I was, you know, showing the outliers going to the West coast. That was the second storm that really helped, solidified you know people's trust in my forecasting uh and then dorian was another one that i mean one time we, i think it was my record forty four thousand were were watching live on facebook that That's day and, yeah <laughs> wow. i mean now it's spread out I, i'm on x and uh mm -hmm. you know others youtube and stuff but that was the moment in time where people were scared to death oh like, yeah they thought dorian was gonna hit florida and i think I reassured so many people with my models and my confidence, you know, so it took every little storm to kind of, you know, and Ian was another whole story. I can write a book about Ian and, oh. and how the forecast was so wrong. That was yeah. a crazy, crazy time down here. Yeah. So that was, for me, that's kind of what got me going. Um, the audience in, uh, increased each storm, you know, because hmm. they, they don't care about blue sky weather. Like, right. so you're not going to, you're not right. going to get any trust in new followers right now. And there's, there isn't any weather to talk about. That's right. That's definitely true. Yeah, for me, uh, definitely last summer, like during all that flooding, it, it, it was crazy. It, multiple flooding events, like back to back. Um, and it just didn't seem to stop. Like early, yeah, it was in mid mid July was, was a Vermont one. And then Lemonster, Mass, uh, they had another, they, they had a significant flooding event, event that was very localized. So I was at both of those. Uh, I got like drone footage of that. So it, it definitely like Mike said, it, pe people want to see stuff like that, and it definitely grows your page, uh, like especially when you're the first one on scene, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I've, actually, yeah. I'm looking at some of your stuff from Hampton Beach, mm. um, and I shared it. I, I can I, now you have that blue sky, uh, crazy footage, yeah, of yeah, the drone, and I'm I shared your video, so I that did, one yeah. must have been pretty viral for you, yeah, it, it did, yeah, and. Yeah, it, it it's it's unbelievable how like viral they can go. I, I think that video it has almost thirty thousand likes on on Instagram. Uh, the Hampton one, I I got like fifteen thousand followers on Instagram in like a week and a half, two weeks. That was pretty cool to see. It you know it, it makes you like happy that your work's paying off and and, and yeah, growing. Well, I, I will tell you the the most surprising thing I've learned in the last six months is the growth of TikTok. Mm. That that has become my second largest platform. Huh. Uh, I'll post it. So I did it. I was up there for the Panama City tornado and had footage of it. It's up to like 800,000 views in uh, four or five days. Uh, wow. It was it was the same footage everybody else had, but I was first. But people mm. on TikTok, like I did a video with the hurricane season. That's already up to 110,000 from yesterday. So I have learned, man, TikTok. I even did a video on the flooding up there because uh, mm -hmm. I put I, I did a, a piece of a bunch of clips since I saw somebody did and it went viral. So you got to if you're not there yet, there is a lot of people on that platform. And, and they, so do spread. you two think do you two think that people are following you on these various platforms be just to follow you because it's interest? They're local. Like I can see, Mike, you have a tremendous amount of people following you in Florida because of hurricanes and, you know, up the Atlantic coast. And Henry, I, it's cool to look at the snow from down here yeah. where it's nice and warm. I don't mind yeah. looking at your snow, yeah. but I don't want, I mean, but do you think you have a, a bigger audience that's out there that's just interested in weather and just watching you guys like on TikTok? Cause that number just strikes me like that's yeah. a lot of people yeah. to be on TikTok just watching you for weather. Well, for me, uh, I, I think I'm seeing more outside of Florida on there. I don't know if it's their algorithm or mm -hmm. what, but um, 
I did a video just a little bit ago on the storms that we're seeing up in uh, the Great Lakes region. You know, they're going to have a big tornado outbreak tonight. And yeah, I saw a lot of people responding in that area. So I, I think they've mastered when somebody likes it, they might recognize they're from Chicago and then everybody Chicago feeds might see it. Um, that's right. So that to me has been, uh, you know, like I said, I, I barely even had this TikTok not that long ago. Breaking news uh, for everybody. Yeah. This, if you're there. watching this afterwards, the storms hopefully are all past you. Well, yeah, they're they're going to be monsters. Um, yeah, that's bad. But you know the the you know the mayor, you know sheriffs. I've met sheriffs uh, that tell me they only watch me on TikTok, and I've seen yeah. fire chiefs. They only you know. Uh, I tell you with the funniest story. I, I'll never forget three or four in the morning. Somebody did a U turn on US nineteen, flipped on the lights. It was a high patrolman, and he's like, "I knew you were out here. I, I follow you on TikTok." And, you know, so it's just a new platform, and people like it. And for some reason, they're spreading it on there a lot better than I'm getting anywhere else. So hmm. um, it's just a really easy way to get a lot of engagement and it spreads, you know. Definitely. Yeah. Yep. Tell me what you think, Henry. Do you, do you think you're getting people outside of the New England area that are following you for yeah. just the pretty pictures or the? Yeah. So a lot of the followers, they, they come with like these big events. Uh, so I, I, a lot of them are from New England, uh, from, from you know, New England, North, Northeast area. Uh, so the, the engagement is, is pretty, pretty big when, when there's storms. When it's not many storms, like, it, you know, like clear sky, people don't really care about that. But there's a lot of people that engage when there's a storm because they want to know what's going to happen. Uh, so I, I, I definitely feel like there's a lot of people throughout New England that, that look at my stuff. Um, and they, they message me, like ask me questions. So, so that's yeah. a good thing. So, and, and you're both pretty re responsive on your pages. I have seen that you, you, you give real answers and, and you're not, you don't seem to be like overstepping your bounds. Like, Oh no, this is never going to happen. It's like, mm -hmm. I've seen you both like, no, take care, be careful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. I mean, it, for me, it's just been a, a, a I think cause being consistent, uh, followers, be, you know, they want to follow people they trust and they like a style. And that's like talking with my local meteorologist here in Tampa. Every one of our Mets has a little different style to them mm. and people gravitate to those people that they like, you know? So for me, I um, mean, you know, I'm sponsored by ABC fine wine and spirits of all people like they, cause I know I'd like to have beer. <laughs> and so um, a lot of my weather fans are beer drinkers. A lot of my weather fans are NASCAR fans and, and baseball fans and have Frenchies. So I think cool. a lot of my key, and I just do it because I just like interaction with people. I like to brag about my kids. I like to share stories. So that's really helped my following uh, become kind of me. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. the, the people that resonate with my page are kind of like the same people that can relate to my lifestyle. So yeah, that's uh, it's, it's made life easy because like I was mentioned before, I've never really met a, a, a pissed off fan in public or <laughs> most of them are good people. They're, they're, you know, my wife, uh, Julie today she works at public. Somebody took a selfie with her. They're like, are you Mike's wife? <laughs> You know, yeah. so, you know, the kids are just so I, I think for me and I did it uh, by accident, um, sharing my life because I, I just enjoy it. I enjoyed having fun and posting sometimes too much. So but I think it's really helped me. And I, and believe it or not, I'm seeing a lot of meteorologists doing that now. And I don't know if I was you know started the trend or not, but I think everybody's finding out they want to see more of your personal life. They don't yeah. you know, they didn't get their weather from anything. Yeah. They, they want to relate to that person. I, yeah, I, I totally agree. Yeah, I, I, I've noticed uh, when I, I post videos, uh, some a lot of videos I do where, you know, me out there in a the storm, you know, showing my face, showing them what's happening. I, those videos do do very well because um, they, they, they want to see you. They, they want to see like what it's actually going on. Uh, like my personal life, like the giant pumpkins I grew, uh, I, I grew a world record butternut squash a few years ago, 65 pounds. <laughs> uh, that was that was cool. Pe people. People thought that was really cool. That so. is. No, there was the person behind the camera. You're right. And yeah. Definitely. That is. So, yeah. and you both just mentioned meteorologists. So, for anyone out there who doesn't know, a meteorologist is somebody who actually has a degree, has gone into weather forecasting and doing these things. Neither of you two have done that, but you've both made a career out of this. Has there been any comment, questions, thought process that maybe you should go there? Maybe Henry, tell me about that. Tell me what yeah. you're doing with that kind of thing. Amateur so, versus pro 
you guys are both almost professionals as it is. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's that, that's a good question. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, my main goal, like when I when I was younger, is I wanted to be a TV meteorologist. I uh, be on TV broadcasting the weather, but I I'm not good at math. Like I I, I can't do that calculus stuff. I took one class. Uh, I I I just couldn't do it. So and I, like. I feel like every everybody does broadcast meteorology. Like I want it to be a little different from people and kind of create my own weather channel to give forecast people. So I've self taught myself like how to read the models. Like you know, you got to know like the biases that these model models have. And and there's people that you learn from, uh, like uh, you know, on Twitter or X now. Uh, so you, it, it, it's a lot. It, it's definitely a lot. Uh, but you know, you kind of just self teach yourself and. And yeah, you build something off it. Yeah, I d ditto everything he, you know, Henry said. Um, I hated math. Uh, I got a background in marketing, so I think that's helped me a little bit. Uh, but I haven't really, you know, there there has been a handful of Mets, obviously, that hate what we do, and I, I totally yeah. respect them, and I try so hard to never put them down because mm -hmm. they did go to school, they, you know, got the education. Uh, there's a lot of jealousy. Um, when numbers come into play, you know, when you have this much, they have this much. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been so fortunate in the Tampa Bay market, like I was mentioning, I mean, all five of our big Mets I've met personally and actually have their phone numbers now. So mm -hmm. for some reason they've all accepted it and I can't mm -hmm. believe it. Um, so I think mm -hmm. they have accepted what we do to a point. There's a lot of bad eggs out there though, that share stuff. Um, TikTok especially. Yeah. Uh, and, and they're always, worried about that natural Weather service is putting out stuff all the time trust who you you know who who be careful who you trust because there's a lot of anybody can do what we do and, and share yeah, the most yeah. scariest models so i think once you become established and they leave you they leave you alone because they trust you and um that's yeah that's definitely that's definitely true you, you know, when, when, once, you, once you build a platform like you know people that that's people's source so that's 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 what they go to and yeah, yeah. I get, there was this guy on TikTok. uh you know, he was, he was using one of these models, the NAM model that always overdoes the wind right. gusts. And he was saying widespread 75 mile per hour wind gusts all throughout the Northeast. And yeah, and the post got like, I don't know, millions of views. And because that's, it, it's all hype. Like, yeah, that's hype. It, so, yeah, fill me in on that, Harry and, and Mike. Knowing that it's all hype, there's a lot of hype out there like that. How does somebody find someone? Particularly like you, Henry, who's local. I mean, I, we've got people all over the planet who listen to this show. They, they're they looking for somebody in Europe. They're looking for somebody in Oregon. They're looking, you know, various places. How are they going to kind of get a feel for what's hype versus what's real? Yeah. So, I I, I mean, they, they the, the most thing you want out of your followers is the trust. You want them to trust you. Uh, so, they... Obviously, like the more content they see that you put out that is actually they realize that's pretty accurate, the, the more they'll trust you. Uh, so, that's, yeah. Well, yeah, totally. Um, I think so. I was that guy probably when I started that would share the one run that was the worst case scenario because you get addicted mm -hmm. to clicks like, oh, my God, look, oh, my God, I got you know all these clicks. And yeah. <laughs> but me, I take it personally. And, and when you're wrong. When you become wrong a lot, A, I don't like losing, and B, people will never trust you again. Yeah. Uh, so I'm seeing these TikTok guys. There's one right now. The guy's got 3.2 million views on, on a storm that was going to impact all 48 states. <laughs> 3.2 million views, which is crazy. But That's crazy. It was the, uh, the, the headline, you know, all 48 states are going to be impacted. So there, he, they, fear sells. And there's a lot of people out there that look, and I'm telling you, there's some reputable meteorologists I would never mm -hmm. name out publicly, but they're they're becoming addicted to this yeah. clickbait syndrome of wow, worst case scenario. And I don't feel comfortable with it. I tried it a couple of times, man, and the reactions that I got, I deleted them because I felt mm -hmm. I'm falling into this trap. So I think mm -hmm. long term relationships, uh, people will know, dude. So this this page I'm talking about that's talking about this 48 state thing. I did get a bunch of tags on there. You know, I'll only trust Mike. I only trust Mike. Mike, what do you think? Because I think people get tired of getting burned. And, uh, and how do how yeah. do I know? It, me as a casual weather person, I mean, I go to the National Hurricane Center website to 
every morning starting next month mm -hmm. as it gets earlier and earlier in the year. Um, and how do I know when someone was wrong? Well, I, because eventually uh, it, you, you just kind of wait for that time frame. And if it doesn't happen, yeah. then, then people get mad. They'll be like, oh, you were wrong, you know. Uh, and, right. and if you do that once or twice, they're going to know. Don't trust this guy. Look at, oh, this guy again. There's that guy again, you know. Um, yeah. So I, I think it's just a natural, you know, process that you go through where people over time, you know, start to trust you. And um, Definitely. I and, and you go back to the meteorology thing. So I don't, you know, the only thing I always tell people, first off, you know, book smart to me is, is you know, having a piece of paper is great but I consider myself self-taught. And as uh, Henry mentioned, I, I learn from the best. I, I do my own studying. And, you know, uh, we all have same access to the, the models that everybody has. And, and that's the bottom line. So there's no data that a, a meteorologist has that I don't have access to. I mean, we have paid sites. Yeah. It's all how you interpret it. Now, like Henry mentioned, the NAM model, yeah. worst model on the planet for hurricanes, everything else. Yeah. It's so you, you, you eventually learn uh, what you're going to put out to the public. And, and because, you know, I, I'm very careful now what I share and I have to believe in it. So we all have, you know, we all have the same access to the same models and tools. It's how you end up presenting them. Um, every year, the GFS model might be terrible. And What's a GFS? That's just the American model. Oh, okay. uh, and with Ian, we had a, a big skew in the, the tracks uh, west of Tampa and they included that in the cone and, and, you know, I never talk against forecasters or whatnot, but the Euro, the European model, other models were trending Southwest Florida. And mm. I was concerned. I even did a YouTube video way ahead of time. I usually don't do it. I just said, man, I don't think this is the right forecast. This is why this GFS model has been terrible all year. Mm. And then finally they, one of the posts were, we're not going to look at the GFS. And that's when we had a huge track change to Fort Myers. Um, so, you know, uh, even, even the best get it wrong. And, and that was only two years ago. We had a, a major shift in the models mm. just two days before. And I tell you what, that really, that storm bothered me more than anything because it was expected to hit the panhandle as a hurricane and it was supposed to hit on Friday. So everybody's mindset and from what mm. the news was saying was, Oh, it's going to be a weakening hurricane. It's going to be uh, Friday. Well, it shifted to, you know, the East, and that got it there two days earlier, and it was still a major hurricane. Mm. So people, it, mindset from the news was weekend storm, weakening storm. It ended up turning mm. two days earlier, and it was a cat four, almost five. Yeah. Totally caught people off guard. There was no time to evacuate because in people's heads, they kept hearing a weekend landfall because that was the, the center mm. of the cone. Mm -hmm. And we got a long way to go to, to get out of this whole cone thing and, and realize yeah. what the cone yeah. really is. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that I, I think they're making some changes with the cone. Like you, you'll know in this, like yeah. they make some changes this year. That the well, they, add, you know? they're including inland watches and warnings now. Okay, which is good, and I th I think they're kind of getting away from the bold lines of the cone. So when you see those watches and warnings extend outside the cone, I think it's going to put a better perspective because everybody's just trained to focus on that cone, and now right. they're, now they're going to see watch, watches and warnings extend well to the east and inland. And I think that's going to be a great, uh, yeah, really do. Definitely, for sure, for sure. That's my ramble on that subject. There we go. <laughs> there it is, right there. Yep. Mm. And you can see uh, the cone is kind of hidden now, and you just pretty much see the warnings. Yep. Yeah, I, I like. I do like this. I mean, this is an unofficial beta testing thing they're going to be doing this year for everybody. But yeah, I do like that um, yeah, style yeah. of making sure everybody, you know, I've got family in Orlando. They know because they're smart about it that, wait, just because it says on Tampa, the hurricane warning doesn't mean it's not going to hit Orlando. Hurricanes are big. Right. In case you didn't know that. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Henry, I want to ask you, um, we've talked a lot about hurricanes. We've talked about, a lot about snow. What about the, and we just barely touched on climate change. Tell mm. me about how climate change, in your opinion, I and mean, we're, you know, we yeah. know what's happening. It's not a yeah, question. Yeah. yeah. But what is that changing about what you have to do up there in New England? Is it going to be more 
fire season. I mean, I know Canada's already got a fire season started here in February, which is crazy to me. Yeah, it, it's 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 definitely making imp- an impact. One hundred percent. Actually, maybe I maybe I asked the wrong question. Actually, it, is fire part of weather tracking stuff for you guys? Uh, it can be, I guess. Um, smoke. Yeah, yeah. The winds, humidity, I mean, definitely uh, uh, it's a big part of, of these wildfires and conditions. You know, we had them in Florida, you know, delayed the they, uh, July race in Daytona, you know, several years back. We had that big uh, wildfire outbreak. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I try to cover it when, when there's, you know, we have outbreaks like that. Yeah, like over the summer, there was a lot of smoke uh, throughout Canada. New England. Canada, yeah, often a wildfire is all moving east. Massive, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. The scenes from New York look like a like Mars, you know. Yeah, that was unbelievable. Yeah, orange and everything. That was crazy. I um, and we do have a question there for you guys from the chat about uh, what are they doing for tornadoes when they only have a ten minute warning? Uh, yeah, Henry, you can go for that one. Then I'll throw in two cents. I uh, get to the obviously, you know lowest part of your house if possible uh stay away from windows um that's it's really all you can do i uh, get away from windows get to the and lower part of your house um if you have a noah uh radio turn that on uh yeah I, I've, I've seen a lot of videos out there like on tiktok people standing like outside filming a tornado yeah. it, it's crazy and you just don't do that i mean there's a reason why there's Storm shelters and 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 yeah. So well, yeah. They so the, the because of flying debris, they want you in the middle part of your home. Bathrooms mm-hmm. usually have other walls, so you're building a protection of wall. A lot of walls had to get to you before where yeah. you're at. And if you protect yourself in a bathtub with some towels and mattresses, yeah. you know one thing about tornadoes is it kind of lifts everything up. Um, right. So, you know, protecting yourself from falling debris and uh, that is, is just the biggest thing. And I always tell people, for me, radar is, is mm. my friend because radar will show you exactly where you're at, where that supercell is at. It'll give you kind of an, a timestamp in your head. Um, hey, this thing's, you know, in Orlando coming this way or, you know, the golf. So learning radar to me is something I would love everybody to try to do, you know, because you can it's get them so on true. apps and you kind of get an idea where the storm's at and how far away it is. Um, yep. I, I agree. I, I'm really good at, I love his radar scope. Yeah. That's um, what I use. It's yeah. It's, it's a little complicated for people just, uh, you know, getting used to it, but it's precise. Like it, it shows your location. So if you have a phone, then, you know, obviously every tornado warning, try to pull up a radar and, and yeah. Yeah. And, and, and for us down here, um, I get annoyed with watches, sometimes they issue them. My biggest beef online ever, if I was to beef anybody in the weather world, is we know there's a watch coming, but they wait. And sometimes that watch comes out at 11 o'clock at night, midnight. Um, and it's terrible because some people go to bed. Uh, mm. And notifications on your phone, mine are off. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm sleeping, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't even, I mean, I'm pretty tech savvy. Uh, I don't take the time to worry about it, but I don't get notifications at night. So mm. I'm more worried about that with people sleeping and, and uh, you know, it's like you mentioned the, the old NOAA weather radios, you can get them everywhere. Uh, they at least uh, beep and you have that classic, you know, there's a tornado warning. So it all goes back to that, you know, uh, don't want to rely on tornado sirens. I, I hear James Spann's talking about it all the time. Yeah. Sometimes that's not enough time, you know? Uh, so being weather aware is probably number one uh, and, and then have some way to get notifications radar radios phones um and just be weather aware and have a plan where you're going to go if you hear something you got a few seconds to go but just have a plan where you're going to go because it's not long i mean i i've seen videos where it's one second come and then then a few minutes later it's it's all all you know everything breaks loose and and now as you get an alert on your phone your your phone should give you an alert which is helpful too and the new te- the technology now it's 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 helpful for sure. Do those do those um, alerts break through like the amber alert thing breaks yeah. through the everything? Do does if you set that up, can a weather alert like that break through for people? Yeah, they're getting really good. Uh, I don't know was it geofencing. I don't know how what the mm-hmm. word is, but they they know where you're at. <clears throat> One thing I learned with hurricanes is crazy. Uh, as I drive in these different states, or I'll get the warning as soon as I'm in that warning zone. 
Yeah. So they figured out a way to off cell phone towers. So somebody south St. Pete, you know, 40 miles from my home doesn't get the same alert that I get. So they've they've really figured out a great way to notify people based on your location. And I think that's, you know, I noticed the other day, like they're they're going on uh, cable, uh, you know, cable airways at the same time as your phone. So they're they're really I think there's the the notification systems that the weather systems using is really helping or will help this year. It's huge. Yeah, for sure. And you guys led me right into my final question for you is what is your ultimate piece of tech? What's that dream piece? If you could come up with anything that you want <laughs> to be able to use, to be able to do work better besides a crystal ball. Cause I don't have any ability to see that happening anytime soon, but beyond that, what would you actually want? Well, for me, it'd be a vehicle that, um, I could drive and surge and feel safe. In surge, okay, define what you mean by Well, surge is water. So mm -hmm. every storm chase I've done, I stayed away from water. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just want to see it. I want to, you know, safely see it. But uh, I blew my truck up uh, in Ian. I actually got water injected into my intake. So mm -hmm. I'm scared of surge now. So I, I want some sort of, you know, comfort the, that I could drive in water. <laughs> yeah. I know the new Cybertruck is uh, waterproof, but I don't know how saltwater and Teslas do. So yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, that's, you know, the, I'll take the old Jeeps and Humvees when I was in the Marine Corps. Yeah. And, and the boarding so, gear. Yeah. So I guess me would just be more, uh, a more stable vehicle that I, I would not, I was in a, a next that Panama city tornado a few weeks back and the truck started rocking a little bit. And I I got a little, a little anxious, worried about getting flipped and lifted off the ground. So for me, it would be a heavier truck that pretty much could handle anything. Bolt, and I'm more worried about glass. I need to, you know, I have a friend of mine was storm chasing and he got a hit with, with shrap, you know, shrapnel flying and lost two windows. So I, hmm. I, I would like bulletproof glass in a heavier vehicle that could handle water that I could go, you know, safely in search. <laughs> Tell us, Henry, what's your, what's your dream piece of gear for you? Um, I mean, I, I have a storm chase vehicle right now. It has 250,000 miles on it. Uh, so it's, it's a 2009 Acura MDX. So it, it, it runs pretty good. Uh, but eventually I'd, I'd want something a little bigger, like, like Mike said, you know, higher tires, maybe a little better in the snow. Um, but Mike, you mentioned this. I, so when I storm chase, I obviously we, we want to get our information out to our followers, uh, as quickly as possible. So in New England here, like there's a lot of areas that have not very good connection. So when I'm trying to post stuff, update people, it just doesn't want to post. So I, I'd, I'd want something that is able to give me connection. Like, right. yeah, you, you were talking about that earlier. Well, one, one trick that I've learned over the years is turn off 5G. Like don't use 5G. Okay. Um, 4G, everybody's defaulted to 5G. So your phones can manually be set to... Used to be 3G, but now that's reserved, I think, for 911. But uh, mm. that's a little trick that I use is 4G um, because you know you might lose a little quality, but there's not a lot of people on it. So, yeah. and then this other comp company, company uh, is called uh, G Local Me, Glocal Me, I call it G L O C A L M E. Uh, Amazon sells their little, it, so they actually have their own little uh, Wi Fi router. Mm. And what it does, you buy $59. 64 gigabyte of bandwidth and they connect to the, the nearest tower. They don't care if it's right. Billy Bob's internet, AT&T, oh, wow. Sprint. So if, if, if Verizon's down, it'll connect to Sprint. So it, hmm. it buys keys from whatever available towers out there. So I have a 4G one and a 5G one. Uh, and they're great because I have them both run at the same time and I do a speed test. That's another trick I've learned is before I go live or, any, or not, I, I, I'll do a speed test on my phone, the 4G, 5G, and I, I'll pick the best one. Uh, so that helps. So always, you know, always have speed test on your browser so you can at least pick, you know, know it which sounds one like the replacement, yeah. the old fashioned South Florida thing was have a landline phone because cell yeah. towers are going to go down or be wiped yeah. out. Sounds like the replacement for that idea since we don't do landlines very much anymore. Well, Starlink's pretty darn good, man, because I had my first test at Daytona two weeks ago and never lost signal. We had some pretty, pretty big clouds roll through. So. I've heard a lot of storm chasers are mounting those on their trucks and uh, it's a, you know, it's 150 bucks a month, but I do it as a backup for yeah. my work. Um, so I could always just whip that out. 
know? I'm thinking that new router thing that, uh, that I'm certain you have it on your page there um, to as a backup for the house, just like here mm-hmm. after during the storm. Yeah. Throw this, throw this up now to, uh, to get us through out of that. That would be a great, we have flown through a whole hour. guys. <laughs> yeah. sure Thank you both so much for doing this. Um, thank you for all the questions that were out there and comments. We saw, saw a bunch of stuff fly by here for everybody. Let me throw up our final slide. And if there is a question for our guests, you can reach out to us, creation station at Broward.org, and we'll reach out to them and pass it along for you. Or both of their media feeds are shared in our links, so you can go follow them directly. Have a great time, everybody, and thanks again to our guests this month. Thanks. Thank you.